Hey, it's Todd, and in this video, I want to talk to you about this little desktop display device that I built to monitor my daughter's blood sugar. If you'd like to see how I built it, stick around. In this video, I'd like to walk you through how I built a very simple desktop monitor for my daughter's Dexcom-based blood glucose levels using Node-RED, MQTT, and the M5 stack. I'll explain what it is, give you an overview of the architecture, and then show you how I created it. So what are we talking about here? Well, I wanted a really easy way to check my daughter's blood sugar levels at any time throughout the day as I work at my desk. Now, there are many ways to accomplish this. There are smartphone apps, websites you can log into. I've even written a small node script that runs in a terminal and provides desktop notifications if the levels exceed a given threshold. But you see, I can be sometimes kind of lazy and sometimes I'd forget to launch the script in my terminal or I'd get busy and forget to check the terminal throughout the day. So I figured a small and unobtrusive device that sits next to my desktop on my desk would be the perfect way to keep an eye on her levels with the minimum amount of effort. Plus it was a really fun way to learn more about some various cloud technologies and since my job is to be a developer advocate for cloud and cloud database technologies, I thought it would be a perfect project to work on. Before I show you how it was built, let's take a look at the finished product. So here's what the finished project looks like. As you can see, the unit is pretty compact at 54 millimeters tall by 54 millimeters wide. The OLED display is bright and easy to read, and there is a power button and USB-C port on the side that is used for uploading the program and for powering and charging the internal battery. There are three buttons on the front of the unit. The first button will manually request a new reading. The middle button will display the current battery, and the final button will reconnect Wi-Fi and MQTT if either gets hung up or disconnected. Now, it's a really simple little device with a very specific purpose, but of all the little projects that I've worked on in the past few years, it's probably the one that I use the most and the one that is the most important to me. So now that you've seen the device and how it works, let's take a look at the architecture. The architecture for this system consists of four parts. It begins with the Node-RED flow that communicates with the Dexcom Share API to retrieve the blood glucose readings every five minutes. When the Node-RED flow receives a new reading, it persists the reading into my autonomous database instance in the cloud so that I can perform queries, reports, and eventually apply machine learning to the data for further analysis. It also publishes a message containing the reading to an MQTT topic hosted on a RabbitMQ instance in the cloud. The M5 stack display subscribes to the MQTT topic and listens for new messages to be published. When a new message is received, the display is updated to show the new reading. The M5 stack can also request a manual check by publishing a message back to Node-RED on a separate topic. The really amazing thing about this entire architecture is that there is no monthly charge for the Node-RED instance, the RabbitMQ instance, and the Autonomous DB instance since I'm using the always free capabilities of the Oracle Cloud. Check out my other videos for more information or click on the link in the description below to sign up and get started on your own. So now that we've looked at an overview of the architecture, let's focus in on the Node-RED flow that retrieves the data from the Dexcom API, persists the data in my database, and publishes it to the MQTT topic. Let's look at the Node-RED flow that powers this project. There are three separate parts to the flow, retrieving an ORDS OAuth token, retrieving a Dexcom session token, and retrieving the glucose readings. We'll break down each step individually. The first part of the flow is where we retrieve our ORDS auth token and store it for use later on. The inject node will run when the flow is deployed and every 60 minutes after that. Here we configure the data that will be posted along with our request to retrieve the token. We set a header for the proper content type and set the payload that ORDS expects for the token. This node represents the HTTP post to retrieve the token. It receives the message object from the function node and sets the headers and body on the request. We're using basic auth for this call and passing our ORDS client ID as the username and client secret as the password. Node-RED will return a parsed JSON object from the result of this HTTP request. We add a debug node so we can see the result. Finally, we use a change node to store the ORDS access token into the flow scope for use later on. 
When we deploy the flow, we can see the result of our ORDS token request in the debug panel. We can also see that our token has been stored into the flow scope so that we can access it later on. The next portion of the flow is where we retrieve a session token for use in our calls to the Dexcom API. In this inject node, we'll configure the payload that we'll send along to the Dexcom API to retrieve our session token. The payload consists of three values, an application ID, which uses the hard-coded GUID value shown here, and an account name and password. The account name value is your Dexcom share username, and the password is your Dexcom share password. These are the values that we, you would normally use to log into the Dexcom Clarity application and website. The next node is the HTTP request to retrieve the session token that will pass along with subsequent requests to the share API. It uses the object from the inject node as the body of the HTTP post request and returns a parsed JSON object containing the token. I've added a debug node so I can see the result of the Dexcom token request. And again, I store the Dexcom session token into the flow scope for use later on. If we deploy this updated flow, we'll see both the ORDS token request and the Dexcom token request are completed and the values are output in the debug console. The last part of this flow is where we retrieve the glucose readings every five minutes. Our inject node will fire once when the flow is deployed and repeats every five minutes. In the next node, we grab the Dexcom token from our flow scope and set it into the message scope. Next, we make an HTTP request to the Share API's read publisher latest glucose values endpoint, passing our token as the session ID URL variable with a max count URL variable set to one. This will retrieve the latest glucose reading from the Dexcom system and return a parsed JSON object. We'll debug the value returned from the API and take a look at what we've got. Now that we've received a result from the Dexcom API, we can see that we have a JavaScript object containing three different date values, an integer representing the trend and an integer for the value. The DT entry represents the display time on the monitor at the time the reading was obtained. Notice the format here is not what JavaScript expects for a date, so we'll have to parse that into a valid JavaScript date later on. The trend represents the glucose level's current progression from 1 to 9, with 1 being rising rapidly and 9 being dropping rapidly. The value item is the most recent blood sugar reading. Next, we'll do some minor formatting on the values and get them ready to publish to MQTT. In this node, we simply use eval and some regex to convert the Dexcom dates to proper JavaScript dates. And in this node, we simplify the format a bit to get it ready to be published to our MQTT topic. Finally, we publish the cleaned up data to our MQTT server on the Dexcom slash reading topic. If you don't have an MQTT server available, check out the link above to learn how to turn up your own instance of RabbitMQ in the Oracle Cloud. At this point, our glucose readings will be published every five minutes to our MQTT topic, ready to be consumed by our M5Stack client. Before we take a look at the M5Stack client, let's add a few things to our flow. We've added in a function node after our parse dates node to keep a running history of data in the context scope of our flow that we can pass on to a chart node so that we can have a nice historical view of our data in the browser. And here we have a very simple line chart node that receives the properly formatted data from our previous function node and renders a chart to the slash readings path in node red. The result is a very nice line chart that shows the last 50 readings. The final piece of this flow is to persist the data to our autonomous database table using ORDS. This begins with the function node to format the message into the proper shape for the ORDS request. We set the authorization header to our ORDS token that we retrieved in step one and set the payload into the JSON format expected by ORDS. The HTTP request node will take the JSON object from the previous node, use the headers and set the body to the JSON payload and return a parsed JSON object. And the result of the persistence operation will be output to our debug panel. After deploying the completed flow, 
we can see that all of our tokens are retrieved and our reading is persisted to the Oracle database. We can manually invoke the inject to retrieve a reading on demand. Before we look at the M5 code, let's create a very simple node red flow to test that our MQTT messages can be retrieved from the topic we are publishing to. Here we have a very simple MQTT in node that will subscribe to the Dexcom slash reading topic. It's wired up to a debug node that will output the readings each time the subscription receives a new message. Now let's look at the M5 stack display. I'll show you how it was programmed with the Arduino IDE to subscribe to the MQTT topic, update the display, and request refresh data. The Arduino code behind the M5 stack display, as with all Arduino projects, begins with the setup function. On line 9, we call the connect function. The connect function sets some basic options on our M5 LCD display and in turn calls Wi-Fi connect and MQTT connect. The Wi-Fi function uses the Wi-Fi library to attempt to make a connection to my Wi-Fi network using my SSID and password and blocks until that connection is successful. The MQTT function blocks until a connection has been made to our MQTT client, which we attempt to do on line 5 here. The string that is passed as the first argument to client.connect is a unique string that identifies our client and our MQTT user and pass are passed as the second and third arguments. On line 9, we register a callback, passing a reference to our message received function. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Once we're connected and our callback is registered, on line 10, we subscribe to the Dexcom slash reading topic that we set in our node red flow to publish our readings on. Here's our message received callback function. It accepts three arguments the topic, a byte array containing the payload, and the length of the payload. We loop over the byte array and build up a string that represents the JSON string that we published in node red. On lines 8 through 16, we parse out that string into a JSON object and set the values into a reading object, which we pass on line 18 to the render level function. The render level function determines the proper color to be used for the reading and draws the current reading value to the screen determines and renders the proper trend arrow, and formats and renders the time of the last reading. Within the loop function, we can check if any of the M5's buttons were pressed and assign an action to take place for each one. Here we have assigned a way to manually request a new reading with button A, and a way to reconnect the Wi-Fi and MQTT clients when button C is pressed. To request a new reading, we very simply publish a new message to a new topic called Dexcom slash refresh with a Boolean value true as the payload. The node red flow is modified to subscribe to the refresh topic and manually trigger a reading from the Dexcom API and publish that new reading per the normal flow. Could this architecture be improved? Sure. Instead of using node red as the interface with the Dexcom API, we could just have the M5 stack display make calls directly to the Dexcom API and then persist those results directly into the database. This would eliminate two potential points of failure in the design. Now as with all projects, evaluate all of your requirements before making a final decision and keep your design as simple as the requirements will allow. Keeping Node Red in the current design gives me the ability to view the web-based charts and allows me to perform additional analysis and formatting of the data as necessary. So it's a trade-off I'm comfortable making in this case. And of course, it gave me a reason to learn more about Node-RED and MQTT, and learning about additional tools is always a good thing in my book. To wrap things up, I hope you've seen how easy it is to create flows with Node-RED that can interact with APIs, persist and retrieve data from an Oracle Autonomous Database instance, and publish data to MQTT. It's also straightforward to program a client with the Arduino IDE and the M5 Stack Core Kit to consume and publish MQTT messages. I hope that you found this tutorial useful. If so, please share it with a friend and give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoy this content, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.